What is up, boys and girls? Welcome back to another Aoki coaching session. Uh, if you guys don't know who I am, or maybe it's your first time on the channel, my name is Aoki. I am the rank one Senna. I have a ton of experience on the champion in every single elo and competitive, solo queue, everything. Uh, and today we're going to be helping out uh, one of the homies named Teruel. He is a silver four Senna player, hopefully going to be much, much higher elo after uh, this session. But um, yeah, if you guys are, no matter what skill level of Senna you guys are, uh, this is going to be an extremely educational video. It's going to show you guys top to bottom what they're doing right so they can continue doing it, do it better, capitalize on it, but more importantly, what they're doing wrong so they can knock that off and uh, climb even higher. So like I said, I like to focus on the good and the bad. And one of the best things I'm seeing from you right now is something that a lot of low elo players struggle with, and that is proactivity. Why is this guy sitting in the base? The game begins at zero seconds, all right? So good stuff standing out here. Um, would I find myself being the only person that's helping, you know, Ward defensively, I like to ward over one side of the wall and stand on the other because you can actually, especially very easily on this side of the map, defend both entrances to your jungler. So we see Vigar, you know, coming out of the base. He's a little late. That's fine. But you want to be thinking about the absolute worst case scenario. And the absolute worst case scenario is that their whole team could have slipped in right here and you're getting like five man invaded. Now the odds of that are very low, admittedly, but it happens, it happens every single day. So you want to be always conditioning yourself to look for the worst case scenario and be planning for it. And honestly, like once you train your mind to like start thinking about that way in solo queue, you're going to find it so much easier to climb because it's going to inform every single one of your decisions. Because before you face check a random bush, you're always going to be thinking about like, wait a second, what's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is that there's three three people in that bush. I should not do it. Okay, so we are seeing a little bit of movement. They actually are going to be invading. So your jungler is invading their red. So what you want to do is just give up this blue, basically. But you want to be dropping a ward to get vision of knowing whether their jungler is actually going to start it. Because sometimes they do these little invades. They're like, okay, we didn't find anything. Let's go back to our jungle. So definitely drop a ward before walking to lane here. And then once again, I'm seeing a big red flag of you not respecting the worst case scenario. I know we had vision of them temporarily over here, but we since lost vision of them. Their bot lane, Morgana and uh, Vayne, which you are really, really good against this lane, by the way, they could both be in this bush. So be thinking about that. Wait for your Vigar to walk with you before you face check any bush early game. All right, we just saw Morgana, Teemo, Ramus there. But yeah, you definitely should have dropped a ward. Would have just given your, your jungler peace of mind. But, okay, so let's talk about matchups. Senna is actually the absolute best support to play against Morgana. You are just really, really good into her. You always have access to poking her. Her spell shield doesn't really stop you from doing anything. You know, it's, it stops your root, but, like, you still get the damage. You still get the souls. Like, you're really good against Morgana. She's much better against, like, champions who want to proactively play lane and, like, play early aggro. Champions like Pike, champions like Blitzcrank, Thresh, Leona. You're really good against... Um, Morgana, and then you're also very good against Vayne because you have a huge, huge range advantage. Sin has the highest range in the game next to Caitlyn. So I want to see a lot of really, really aggro play starting level one. You want to be setting the tone for this lane. And then another thing that you have going for you is that you have Ignite. Now, I don't recommend that you take Ignite. It's actually not a super efficient spell in Senna. Should be always be looking, especially in this lane, I would have gone like Heal or Exhaust. Uh, Ignite is a very, very short range spell. And ideally, as Senna, once you get good enough at spacing, you're never even going to be in range for Ignite. So it's kind of an awkward spell to take, but you will always want to be looking at the objective advantages that you have. I've talked about a couple of them with range advantages, um, but also Morgana as the support brought Teleport for some reason. I'm sure that was just like them taking auto runes, but you are basically up an entire spell in lane. So let's see it. Do you want free access to pro coaches? Well, you're in luck because that's exactly what you can get when you join Gosu Academy. This is a monthly training program for League of Legends led by literal pro coaches that can give you the structure you need to actually improve and climb. They also run four fun tournaments with prizes, and the first 50 people to sign up using my link get their first month for free. Like, imagine getting free professional coaching for an entire month. I am just way too nice to you guys. But remember, it's only the first 50 people, so sign up to Gosu Academy today. All right, Vayne, not respecting the worst case scenario here, by the way. You pop out of the bush, walk at them. Yeah, keep walking, keep walking. Keep fighting, keep fighting. Um, okay, so this should be a completely one fight for you guys. Even, especially because they're focusing Vigar, you can just continue to freely hit. The only thing I will say that you're playing wrong here is that you should be in between shots on Vayne, walking towards your side of the lane so that you're not, you're gonna eventually drop aggro of all these minions. Right now, you're just like taking a lot of minions. And level one trades, like that can do a lot of damage. It adds up. 
See, like, th th your whole health bar is basically, all this damage has just been minions, essentially. Okay, so, obviously you guys are gonna win this fight. Don't even think they kill Vigar. Nope, not even close. All right, so let's talk about what you did right and what you did wrong here. I like the cheese. I like the you pulling the trigger on the what was essentially a 2v1. I don't like that you didn't walk, kite towards your um, Vigar and minions over here. Love that you kept focus on Vayne. It's good, it's good. Don't like this flash because think about it. We actually already know, if you've been paying attention, we know that Ram has started Raptors because we saw vision of him walking to Raptors. So he is either starting his red or his raptor, or, or, like he's starting his raptors, right? So she really has nowhere to go because even if she flashes, one, you should wait for her to flash before you flash after her. You don't need to flash, just continue walking at her here. And then two, let's say she does flash over here. You're gonna get her eventually because your mid will rotate over here. If she flashes this way, your mid will get her there. She has nowhere to go. So don't pull the trigger that fast on the flash. Canceled an auto here on Morgana. Now, I understand with Senna's long auto attack wind up time, sometimes it can be easy to, you know, you think the auto has completed, so you like start walking away at this point. But it's not like you're actually planning to like orb walk after, you know, path forward after this Morgana. You don't want to over chase, right? So there's no, there should be like no real reason where you ever like cancel this auto. Just like let it play out. Just stand still if you have to. See, you missed out on a soul and an auto attack. And on Senna, honestly, that kind of stuff can add up. But good stuff. Good stuff. Well, now it's a 2v1 lane. So what you want to do is you want to post up in this bush right here and completely zone this Morgana away. You don't even need to like necessarily walk at her this way. Walk into this bush, like step into the, like this side of the bush. And then she basically has to respect all the way back here because of your high range. And then what you can do is you can step out, auto queue back into the bush. She doesn't even get to trade back. That is like ideal Senna trading pattern. And that's what you always want to look for. You don't even need to be out here and like giving yourself risk of taking minion aggro and you know, getting hit by Morgana stuff. Also, want to say, great choice in skin. That's the prestige one, right? It's a sick skin. So yeah, I want to see, be seeing, I'm, I'm going to be checking on your, uh, your future VODs. I'm going to be looking for that, that bush trading pattern. Um, kind of, kind of an iffy W here. So you want to be thinking about your W as you should really only be shooting it if you have a chance to follow up and get like an auto or two, auto or two after it. Um, they're playing really, really close to their, their turret. And the really only way you run out your, yourself out of mana through presence of mind is if you are just constantly spamming that W. So be using it a little more strategically. It only does, I think like 70 damage. So, okay. 84 damage. So it's like, it's not that much damage unless it, unless it sets you up for follow-up, then it's good. All right. And then I'm also seeing you just randomly like cue this vein instead of just like auto, auto, auto. Now, when you're in a scenario like this. You want to be auto attacking her until she leaves your auto range and then you Q her. Senna combos are very, very simple and they're all very similar. It's usually just like a standard trade for Senna is like an auto Q or a Q auto. And they both have very, very slight um, pros and cons. But in a scenario like this where she's just like straight up stunned, one, no reason to run away. Two, you, you shouldn't be queuing her because you should be auto attacking her because your auto attack range, if you think about it, is actually smaller than your Q range. Since you can Q through minions, you can't like auto attack through a minion and get that extended uh, like range like you can with Q. So when you're in that close proximity, auto, auto, and then once she's out of your your uh, your auto range, then you can Q through a minion or, you know, Q her or whatever. But yeah, so let, let me talk very briefly about what I just uh, described here, the difference between auto Q and Q auto. Q auto is kind of nice because it slows them so like if they're running away and you're in range for Q, you can Q auto. Auto attack Q is actually faster. Very, very marginally, very, very small amount of, of, of fastness or, you know, faster than, but it is a little bit more efficient to do an auto Q because the animation is just slicker. It's just auto Q, run away. Whereas like Q, W, it's actually like a different auto attack animation because she's not even autoing. She's like dunking the soul out of them. It's, it's an awkward animation. It's weird. doesn't feel right. Um, But yeah. So there, there's a little bit of the difference there. But yeah, when you when, when you have just like, when you could just open fire, you just have free range to auto, always auto over Q in there. And autos don't cost mana, obviously. So a lot of Senna, 
Um, the macro of this champion is very, very simple. You don't even need to be thinking about like roam times or like reset timers, all that, not all that important. Don't you know, don't need to be thinking about like, where, you know, do I should I be diving top, stuff like that. Macro for her is very, very simple. It's very laning uh, centric. She's a very, very strong laner and she's an infinite scaler. So you need to really be focusing on like optimizing your laning, optimizing your DPS output, you know, minimizing your deaths in lane. For that reason. All right, so wave's going to be pushing to us. We are on a gank timer, but with Ramus doing like a little bit of an atypical, um, atypical clear, not really sure where he's going to be. So we, luckily, the wave is going to be pushing into us. Warwick is not roaming down currently, so we're in a very, very safe spot. And we're playing Senna and Vigar, so we're not in any freaking rush to like dominate this lane by any means. You're already off to a pretty good start. Your wave's in a good spot. We're chilling. It looks like Warwick is going to be doing one of two things. He's pathing down, which means most junglers stop and get this as scuttle here. It drives me insane because this is a very gankable lane and they probably don't even have it warded. But most junglers are going to stop to get the scuttle. So don't get baited by the jungler stopping to get the scuttle. I see a lot of supports thinking that like he's coming straight there. But he is coming down now. So let's start the fight, get them interested. There you go. Okay, so once again, we're canceling an auto and we're opening up with W. It is much more efficient to just auto attack. Like one, you should be focusing the Morgana. It's much easier to target. And two, you know, you did land it, but you could have missed it. It would be much more efficient to either just sit there and auto attack and make them tilt, them dodge themselves to death or QW so you get that slow into the W. So wasn't super, super well optimized or well played there, but we got the kill. And again, we're shooting that W for no real reason because best case scenario, it lands and can't follow up with anything all right should be taking a reset here to reset this in or, or push this in oh actually uh we're not gonna be able to crash the wave so this is probably a scenario where i would have like asked my jungler to stay and help us push this next wave but we're not going to be able to be taking the most ideal back that's fine it does still crash nice so when you start playing against better players, they're going to do something called pulling the wave where the Morgana will tank all the minions, pull it up here, and then all of a sudden it's not going to crash and reset to the middle of the wave. And then you're going to be very, very exposed when you go to push. So your Vigar did take it back and TP'd. So uh, itemization for Senna is kind of up in the air right now. What I'm just recommending for all low elo Senna players is just straight up... E Umbral into Eclipse or Eclipse into Umbral. It's a very nice build. It's very, very easy to play. Great utility with ward control. All right, once again, step out of this bush. Auto Q, run back into the bush. That's what you should be doing. There's no there's no reason to even be looking for Ws here. I mean, luckily, you shouldn't even spell shield it, so you get like a ton of damage off of it. But ideally, against any good opponent, this is a very vulnerable place you're putting yourself in. Just walk up, auto Q her. Auto Q her, and then go back to the bush. And, and like, I'm telling you, you do that twice and you've already won the lane. You've got built-in sustain also, so, and they don't. So taking any, like, even neutral trade is in your favor, as long as you get, don't get 100 to 0. All right, so let's talk about vision, because we have, luckily, even though we're playing Senna, the most gankable champion in the entire game, we haven't been ganked yet. So what we should be doing is crash in this wave, and then walk out and extend your vision line. So clear out vision over here if you have a pink, which you do not, uh, and get a ward in the tri bush. Now what most low elo players are going to do is say, "Oh, plates," and start yep, start touching this plate. But you shouldn't be doing this. You should be walking up here with your Vigar, thinking about that worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, we know their top laner's top, we know their mid laner's there, we don't know where their support is, and we don't know where their jungler's at. And we are again, you're going to get ganked as Senna. It, it is the most gankable champ in the game. So instead of hitting this turret, it's fine to like push for plates because like I said, you want to you want to really, really be focusing in on your laning phase of Senna. But walk up here and get vision before we start doing that. I'll always be thinking about worst case scenario. <laughs> because sometimes the worst case scenario happens. All right, uh, it's time to start cutting losses here. Can't, he can't do anything for him. Don't even like, I honestly wouldn't have even like doubled back and tried to put the E on him. It's not going to do anything. Uh, it's really like doubling back and putting the E on him really only matters if it's like a ranged jungler. 
and you don't think they're ever going to be able to get vision of them, but Ramus is the fastest man alive, and he's going to catch the Vigar, and he's going to go into your Shroud anyways. So, yeah, cut losses. It's fine. That was an avoidable gank, though. It honestly was. And now we can, with almost 100% uh, certainty, assume that we're going to lose this dragon. There's going to be three of them on it. They're actually not doing the dragon. Misplay by them. Good. We got Warwick coming down again. Start the fight. Get him interested. Start the fight. Get him interested. Start hitting him. Start hitting him. Okay. I like the idea. You're walking forward in Shroud. But the second you pop Shroud, they're going to know something's up. So really, what you're doing is just alerting them that the that the gank is here. What you should be doing is try to walk forward and get them to use spells on you. If you walk forward, like pass through minion wave, get Morgana to Q you, and even if it hits you, they can't kill you in time, right? It's good. But instead, look, now she has Q for this. So you've got the right idea. You're just not like committing enough. You understand that you should be like, you know, starting the gank because your jungler's here and they can't win 2v3 ever. You're just not like optimizing it quite enough. So Senna is a very, very slow, slow character. All of her abilities come out slow. Her ult has wind up. Her E has wind up. The second you start walking forward as E, alarm bells are going to start going off in their head, right? So try try not to uh, try not to wave a flag that says, hey, our jungler's here. Make, make it look like you're mispositioning. Make it look like you're, you're an idiot and you're wanting to fight them 2v2, 2v1. Pulling out any spells is really, really good for your jungler. Raises the success rate for the gank. All right, what, what, once again, what are we doing? We're just giving it away. The second they see you do that, I mean, it didn't even end up being a gank, but I'm guessing you path forward, assuming that Warwick was coming. But you told, you let them know too. Jump into these, jump into these bushes, bro. Jump into these bushes. Start popping out, auto queuing like I talk, talked about. It's a much, much better way to play that. Because then they might even like tumble forward towards you get really, really invested, and then your jungler's here before theirs, and then you win. Another successful gank. I mean, that's, that's, that's just overcommitting on the Warwick. Let me make sure there wasn't something you could have done differently here. You got the slow on her. Uh, okay, so the only thing that you could have really been doing different here is holding on to your W and just queuing her. Q, all Walk forward, Q, that's slow. All right, nice. Now you're going to be in position to get off a couple more autos. And then you have two AP champions. They're probably going to be able to blow that spell shield, right? So if you had waited for this W, you know, it, it, it might have been doable. But honestly, that's Warwick. That's just Warwick, like, overcommitting. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know down in the comments if you want to see more content like this, more getting into the nitty gritty of how to actually climb out of your ranks, mistakes that a lot of Senna players make. I'd love to do more coaching for you guys. All right, you're not respecting the worst case scenario. Could be Ramus, uh, Morgana, Vayne in that bush, right? And there was no real reason to even walk up that far because the only reason to walk up this far is to keep the wave crashing from crashing, like I talked about earlier, freezing it, pulling it. But... It's already doing that, so. All right, let me see what we just used our ulti on because I am not a big fan of global ults on the Senate, to be honest. Just not a big fan of it. So let me see, let, let me try to see what you saw. See a gank up top. Like, honestly, it would have been close, but I don't even think that Ramus would have killed him. And like now you're sitting on a two minute cooldown. You're you're down a lot of damage in an, a lane where you can straight up all in these guys. Like it, it, it's not like the worst thing that you're looking for those. It's just I personally find that they don't often make the difference. Like the shield is genuinely just like not that much. But that that might have made the difference. I don't know. I'd have to like really get out of microscope and, and look at it. I'm just thinking. I'm just talking like conceptually. You shouldn't always be like looking like, oh, what's top lane doing? Oh, oh, like, because one, it's hard to land. Two, the shield is not that much. And three, you've now like reduced your, that was really good. I want to see, that was perfect. Do you see what you just did to that vein? You pulled out black shield. You decimated her health bar. That was not quite as clean, but th this is literally what the ideal Senna trade looks like. 
Auto, Q, boom. Back into the bush. Now pop out and do it again. There you go, there you go. You're, you're, you're missing a lot of autos here, by the way. They cannot all in you. They cannot. The, fa the fact that you're up in kills and damage and health bar and every resource in the game means that they can't just sit there and trade blows with you, I promise. So, you like walking back and forth and dropping a lot of autos here is just... It's just leaving a lot of damage on the table, but I'd love to see you popping out and doing that bush trick. All right, so we see Warwick running for Rammus down on the river. You have Pryo. You have priority, so you want to walk to this as soon as... Walk up there, bro. Walk up there. Uh, you, you guys need to be way more proactive on rotating to that. Their bot lane cannot get there before you. That's what that's what Pryo means, priority. I know that Vigar's a little bit low, but you could have walked up there. And Rammus doesn't even have flash, so as long as you're, like, spacing out... It'll be fine. There you go. Love to see that, man. Imagine if you had an ultimate. There you go. There you go. Okay, so you shouldn't be you shouldn't be Wing Ramus here. You should be Wing the Morgana or the Vayne from following up because Ramus has actually already done everything he's going to do in this fight. You should be uh, focusing on making sure making it harder for Vayne to follow up on the fight. So that's just like a little bit of. You not really understanding your place in that fight. Your place isn't even necessarily to DPS the Ramus, but it's definitely not to CC the Ramus, who is already right where he wants to be. So CCing does nothing. Ooh, baby! Yeehaw, boys! Love to see that, bro. Good shot, good shot. It's those scenarios that you're going to want to be using like 90% of your ultimates. That was cheeky. I like that. I really like that, actually. Playing around, like, corners like this, it's kind of like you're playing, like, um, I don't know, like a tactical first-person shooter or something, right? Like, popping around this corner, they don't have vision, and then you pop out. You have vision of them, but they don't have vision of you. So it's like you can you can play around corners like that a lot, and uh, you kind of do have to get, like, a little bit tricky, a little nifty with your um, W on Sinus. It's such a slow-moving projectile. Okay, so you are letting your Vigar get destroyed here for no reason. You need to have much better presence than this. Much better presence than this. So I'm, I am i don't know what's going on in comms. You're saying to retreat, but let's count the auto attacks that you let Bane put into Vigar here. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Five autos with that, without you attacking your back. That is terrible, all right? I would be fuming. Okay, think about it this way. I talk about this on stream a lot. If your ADC is running, the worst thing you can do is run alongside them. You have to give whatever is chasing your ADC a reason to stop chasing your ADC. Even if it's just you walking at them and get, like putting the threat of auto-queuing them or something, that'll be enough. I promise you. The vein will back off. So I don't know like really even what you're afraid of because worst case scenario, it's Ramus here and like it is what it is. But you can't let Vayne run him down like that. You have to have presence. The, I, the the concept of presence is so important in League of Legends. But it's especially important in the support position. And it's especially, especially important if you're going to play a champion like Senna, who has incredible presence. All right. Let's see what we do next. We want to uh, macro-wise, we definitely want to be getting out of this lane ASAP. And uh, bringing our lead into either... Uh, definitely mid lane. Alright, so in, in chases like this... Again, you want to get them invested, right? So just walk at her. There you go. There you go. Love that. Love that. Love that. You, play, you played that well. She just uh, condemned you. Now, if Warwick had dodged or ulted through that uh, root, that would have been a kill, by the way. You want to know why? Because you pulled out the Condemn. That was really, really good, the way you started that gank. A lot of people have this misconception that it's the jungler doing the gank, when really it's a collaborative team effort. And you got to be thinking about what are you contributing to it. Okay, what, so what, what, are we, what, are we, what are we doing here, bro? We're looking a little lost here. It looks like you were like wanting to rotate to something mid. Not necessarily sure what. Yep, we got that ward. You got the backup. So one thing you can do is that uh, since you have Umbral Glaive, they nerfed it so that you don't one-shot wards anymore. But it's, it was actually a little bit of a secret buff, you know, with the silver lining because now you t when you when you auto attack wards, it does two damage instead of the full three. 
and uh, that can let Warwick last hit it, and then you both get the gold. So if you're the one that's revealing the ward, like if it's your control ward or if it's your sweeper, let someone else last hit it if possible. And Number Blade makes that really, really easy. Yeah, free low. All right, let's see how this dive plays out. Now, we don't need to be forcing anything. She has literally nowhere to go. Can't go this way, can't go this way, can't go this way. All she can go to is heaven. So just be pushing this wave with Vigar. You don't need even need to be fishing for this. I know it's not you that's doing this, so it's like it's good that you're following up, but that's how the dive should have been played, right? Just auto attack the wave, get it in as soon as possible. All right, take one more wave and then we reset. And then we are going to go take our lead to mid lane. Don't be don't be checking into this. There you go. Just getting some vision. Okay. Honest, okay, you should you should be resetting right now, but I'm going to coach what you actually do. But just know that you take that last wave and then immediately press B and then go mid. So let's see what we actually do. Okay. So Vi I mean Vi Vigar's dead and you can't save him, so don't even waste time. Walk back here and recall. Okay, no reason for you to be walking mid bot. You're not a bot laner anymore. You're a mid laner. So walk mid immediately. Even if Vigar wants to solo lane, honestly, that's good. Any Anytime you can give a, a champion like Vigar or really whoever is in the carry position solo XP, it's really, really good. So uh, don't even need to be bot right now. The best thing you could be doing is uh, walking mid and attacking Yasuo. Sen is actually quite good against Yasuo as long as she has someone who can keep him off him because uh, Yasuo is typically really good against range champions with his wind wall, but your auto attacks and your Qs and half of your ult goes through the wind wall. So again, macro wise, you're just in the wrong lane. Rule of thumb is that once you take bot lane turret, you are no longer a bot laner. So you could have been at this fight faster. So thankfully this fight didn't go wrong. Uh, drop, drop some deep vision here, by the way. You've got, you've got some bodyguards. And Yasuo is dead, so worst case scenario, it's just Ramus and he can't one-shot you. So just ward, ward, get some deep vision. I get asked all the time, like, how, how we should be warding. And again, League of Legends is an ever-shifting game, and there's a mid million quadrillion variables. But rule of thumb, when you're ahead, which you are ahead, ward their jungle. This helps choke them out. This helps you see their rotations before they even happen. This helps you counter jungle. This helps you take their resources. Ward their jungle. Uh, when it's a when it's a neutral or a close game, you should be contesting vision along the river. So that includes like dropping control wards in places like this and this and this and this and this and this, right? And then when you're in a, a losing game, you want to ward your own jungle to try to stop the bleeding, protect your resources, uh, catch them when they're trying to cheese you, stuff like that. Good ward. Good ward. Just covering your bases for the uh, the objective. A uh, little bit of a nitpick, but you guys know how I love the nitpick. If you queue uh, neutral objectives, like the dragon, right before it dies, it'll scoop both of these souls up, and then you don't have to walk over to them and pick them up. So what, what would that say? Like four or five seconds? It's not the end of the world, but you can do it with dragon. One, it's really satisfying. It looks, it looks and feels cool. And two, it can save you a couple seconds, which in a game like League of Legends, a couple seconds could mean the difference between winning and losing the game. Uh, also, after you clear a ward, vision lingers for a, a, a little bit of a moment. So, what I try, what what I try to do is I either stand still or I actually walk the opposite way of the path that I'm actually trying to take because when you clear their vision. It doesn't go away immediately, right? See? See how they still saw exactly where you're at? So, the point of clearing vision is removing information they have about you, right? So, just be aware of that. Clear the ward and then either stand still or like double back here and then go where you want to go. Yep, dropping a ward in this cross path is really, really good too. Now you're starting to be a, a little too deeps and a little too alone. So I would drop all your wards. I wouldn't. This is not your wave to farm, by the way. Not your wave to farm. Sh should have dropped your your deep vision and then reset because you're on a timer for dragon. 
So what you're doing now is one, taking an experience that should be going to Sivir, and two, you're delaying your back when you should, you, you wanna be the very first person at the dragon. So now, okay, now you're gonna go to the dragon, but you didn't get to spin your gold, and you have no wards. So, as the support in the jungle, you need to be cooperatively getting to the dragon before it even starts. Right? So it's great that you have all this vision over here. It really is, like that was really good to get that deep vision, but completely like fumbled your the purpose of you being at the dragon. Yep, I was gonna say, really, really good that you dropped the ulti. Uh, the only thing you should be looking for though is wind wall, which it, uh, maybe I missed it because it is down. Incredible ulti though. I love to see you ult as soon as the fight definitively breaks out. The second you realize this fight's going down one way or the other, just optimize how many people you can hit the uh, the damage with and then send it. Don't wait to like KS with it or try to kill someone with it. Shoot it as like the starting gun that signifies like, hey, the team fight has started, right? Stuff. I'm seeing some really good things here, man. Like honestly, I think you're struggling a little bit just like with a couple of concepts of your role, but you seem very comfortable with this character. Uh, you seem very comfortable in solo queue playing the support role in general. We're just need, we just need to fine tune a couple things. Um, but yeah, I, I I find personally that a lot of play people, a lot a lot of low elo players that tend to play support Senna, um, they almost do it to mask their like lack of macro understanding. Might actually get out of here. But yeah, because she because her macro and like a lot of her mechanics are so simple, they almost use her as like a band-aid. Whereas like you don't want to do that. You want to be a, a support player that understands macro, that understands how to optimize, you know, getting objectives. You still want you you want to be first and foremost a good support player before you're a good center player. And right now I'm seeing a little bit of the opposite, but that's fine because that just means we need to teach you to be a really good support player. You already are a pretty decent center player from what I've seen. All right, so what we should be doing now is we should just kind of be like hovering these guys, hovering in between the uh, the Vigar and the bot lane push. We see two people top. We see Ramus there. You shouldn't be afraid of Ramus, by the way. You should not be afraid of Ramus. Why'd you run away from him? Like he's like the big bad wolf. If he goes on you, it's really good. He cannot one shot you at this stage of the game. Maybe once he gets like four items, but I promise you, he will not kill you before your team can collapse. So basically, um, I learned this concept when I played a lot of competitive on uh, Cloud9 with Tarzan. Is that you need to be playing as if you're invincible and you need to there, there are stages of the game there are moments in the game as support when you are essentially inv invincible so like for instance let's say you check the dragon and their jungler is soloing it it's just the jungler he's trying to sneak it and you as the support are there to stop him you can hit him and he can't hit you back and if he does hit you back then he's tanking you and the dragon and you can kill him a lot of the time like worst case scenario then you just run away right he can't kill you. He can't use abilities on you because then he can't do the dragon. So this is a this is a scenario where you just literally need to play as if you're invincible. Walk up to him and give him a kiss, bro. Drop a ward here, start autoing him. Make him choose to take free damage, give you free souls, give you free vision control, or try to kill you, which he can't because your team could uh your team's got your back. If you can start identifying those scenarios where you can literally just play as if you're invincible, like you you will become a god. You will do so much more than people are used to seeing supports do. Like the entire purpose of the support position is basically to ruin the enemy jungler's life. Like it really is. People think the purpose is to like, I don't know, handhold the ADC until they become god. It's not. It's to ruin the jungler's life. It's the it's the control vision on the jungle, control vision on the dragon. Make sure the, the jungler doesn't have access to any objectives. Ruin all the plays the jungler's trying to make. Okay, we held our W way too long there. Nice follow up on the ulti though. Okay, this is free push. They might be flanking, worst case scenario type stuff. Well, it looks like we're just going for a dive. You should be hitting the uh, the turret here. Hit the turret. But let Warwick do whatever he's trying to do, man. All right, nice. Sivir actually ults you up. Good stuff. 
Okay, so... It seems like you guys have a very, very strong level of control over this game. This is not your wave to farm, by the way. You want to reset? You need to be taking more often resets and buying more control wards. I don't know if you've bought a single one this game. Way more control wards. Having having a number blade is not the same as having a control word, by the way. So don't don't. I I I know one of you guys watching this is like uh, Aoki. He's got he's got umbral. He doesn't need a control word. Not the same. Nice, nice. Once again, cue it right before it dies. Feels cool. It looks cool, and you get two two souls really fast. All right, we're all looking a little lost, and as the support role is very um like you basically have to play around other people when your team looks lost you're going to be doubly lost because you're, you're going to be doing a lot of this stuff where you're like out on these solo missions and this isn't really what you're supposed to be doing you should be controlling vision this is good but you need like your olaf to be escorting you in and controlling vision here we actually see ramus bot lane so this is a baron you have four people topside in close proximity to the baron i want to you should be spam pinging this baron but to finish my thought from earlier, when you have a team that's like has a lead but doesn't really know how to close the game out, you need to be the one shot calling. That's why you need to first and foremost be a good support player before you're a good Senna. Because why is nobody why is nobody telling them to do Baron here? It should be you. You should be telling it. Don't don't assume that your jungler knows to do Baron here. This is a free Baron, bro. We like we get this Baron, the game's over in two minutes. But instead, we kind of just like floundered around. But that's okay, because now you know how to identify what's a good Baron, right? And you should, you should be having a control ward to begin with, plop it in the pit, and then do Baron. Spam ping it. What you'll find is that people in solo queue actually do want to be told what to do. That doesn't sound true on the surface, because solo queue players don't like being, you know, they, 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 they're, they're very, they're very, uh, they're very grumpy, right? Like, ah, don't tell me this, don't tell me that. But if you speak to them in pings, like 99% of the time, solo queue players will, are actually receptive to it. If you if you red ping someone, 90% of the time, they do actually respect it and, and are like, what are you telling me to be scared of or back off? And if you tell them to do Baron, 90% of the time, they actually will do it. But they need to be told first. All right, so this is just sort of gonna be like a fiesta stage of the game, I can tell. This is kind of the part of the game that's a little bit uncoachable because none of this part of the game should even be happening because we should have gotten the Baron. If I can tell, there's a lot of throws going on. It is, this is just like Scooby-Doo nonsense with you guys running back and forth, trading a few kills here and there. Blue, tree, blue team triple kill. Yeah, all of this is like pretty much just uh, uncoachable. Other than you guys still have control of the pit. Ramus is dead. Why are we not spamping Baron? Oh, I, I, I think someone just dropped a singular ping on the Baron. Dude, it, it blows my mind. You can pick this up, by the way. I think. Is that your jungle that has blue? Maybe not. Um, Yeah, it blows my mind how many, like, low elo players treat Baron as if it's, like, some like mythic world of warcraft like in-game boss it's really not it's not that hard to kill the biggest threat about baron isn't actually the baron it's not that hard to kill especially if you have at least three party members the biggest threat is doing it and not killing it fast enough and then the other players come to you and come and kill you right the other team killing the baron itself is not hard so we should we should have already done it like three times by now Oh no, that this this is horrendous. This is this is this is the most egregious mistake I've seen you make. Your role is not to be solo split pushing as Senna here. It's just not. Like I hope you die here just so that like <laughs> it sinks in. I'm kinda glad you died there, as mean as that is to say. Uh but yeah, 100 percent Just drop a ward here, drop a ward here, control ward in the pit, drag easy baron. All right, so now we got the Baron. Let's see what we do with it. Should be a pretty easy, just like either four, mi four man mid, one man top, or just five mid. A little bit easier.
Yeah, I mean... This is all kind of goofy. This is definitely an auto that should have gone on Vayne instead of uh, Ramus. We see Vayne, we see Vayne come back in here. That's an that's an auto, and then you probably get the reset on Q. That's probably an auto kill, auto Q, and it kills Vayne. All right, we're walking our lane in or our wave. You can just continuously free hit that turret till they commit on you. Nice. No, no, no. Your, your job is to hit, hit that turret. You're the designated right clicker right now. And by turret, I mean inhibitor. Yeah, this, you, yeah. You, you're you definitely griefing the late game. Maybe maybe I was too nice to you earlier. When I <laughs> definitely, definitely gr griefing the late game. Uh, I, did, I think you just need a little bit of like a stronger focus on what to do, what your job is in certain scenarios. Um, I mean, yeah, like KDA is really good. Like your presence is not bad. You seem comfortable on Senna. It's, it's just like, there should have been like four Barons that you've gotten. And then you're kind of just like beefing team fights. By not focusing what you should be focusing at the time. It looks like you guys are going to get the win here anyways. Yep, that's about the end of the game. So um, that's going to be wrapping up our coaching se coaching session. Uh, to rule, if you have any questions at all, I would love to know them. You know where to reach me on you know Twitter DMs, Discord DMs, Twitch DMs, OnlyFans DMs, wherever you want to drop those questions. I would be happy to discuss any concepts um, with you. Uh, I, I definitely think you've got some, some work to be doing. Um... And maybe, honestly, I don't think I've ever recommended this to someone, but maybe take a little bit of a break from Senna. Not because you're bad at Senna, it's just that I want you to really play champions that require better macro. Uh, Senna just really doesn't. Her macro is like kind of all, in the same way that I always say, like the decision-making process for ADCs is really easy because pretty much the whole game's decided for them. Kind of like that for Senna too. So I, th I think you might be using Senna as a little bit of a crutch. So maybe try out like a more macro focused champion. Maybe pick up like Blitzcrank or Leona or something and play a couple games and really be focusing on like where you're at on the map, what your job is on a minute to minute basis uh, and on a fight to fight basis and stuff like that. But um, overall, good stuff, man. I, th I think you're definitely going places. I don't know if this is like one of your stronger games or what, but I saw a lot good and a lot bad. So... Yeah, uh, if anyone that watches on YouTube, let me know what you guys think about the coaching session down in the comments. And if you want to see more content like this, take it easy, boys. Peace. Uh...